Hello, everybody. Um, I'd like shortly to introduce the Arts Electronica Future Lab and the educational approach or didactic approach of the Arts Electronica. Um, the Arts Electronica is established as a platform for innovation for 36 years now. And the Arts Electronica Future Lab is the think tank, the R&D department, the atelier laboratory of the Arts Electronica. And we consider our projects to be sketches of future scenarios, sketches of future scenarios as invitations to reflect and discuss um, concepts for the future, and mainly, actually, the meaning of those concepts for our society. We're using uh, scientific exploration, artistic expression, and very interested on the social impact of those initiatives. The Future Lab's been founded in 1996, and it's a very transdisciplinary team working at the lab of 30 members um, that are working there from seven nations, from all different diverse backgrounds, architects, uh, sociologists, software designers, artists with the traditional education coming from an art school, even though many of us um, do understand themselves as being an artist. more silent, uh, physicists, industrial designers, etc., etc. So a very diverse group of uh, disciplines. And the fields of activities um, of the Ars Electronica Future Lab is the encouragement to generate environments for learning, actually, to empower our society, to give opportunities and possibilities for creativity and um, sensibility as well, innovative products that we do, but more and most important, innovative direction, which really comes to the point when we try to contextualize advanced science, advanced uh, technologies to our society, really. New frames for communication, communication not really um, only between people and people, communication also understood as people to environment or people to society. And in recent times, very often also people to robots, people to unmanned aerial vehicles as we see it here, or um, autonomous driving vehicles like cars. New cult cultural experiences that we try to foster. Community for innovation, creating architecture, creating infrastructures and environments that allow um, to jointly create uh, and innovate things and for that also propose a future society. This is uh, the framing of our activities and we're doing this with a lot of um, partners, academic partners, CERN and the MIT Media Lab mainly, uh, Hiroshi Ishii, Joey Ito, Joe Paradiso. Uh, the QD in Brisbane is one of our research partners, as well as the Electronic Visualization Laboratory, ATR, um, etc. There's many of those um, national and international universities that we are collaborating with. Um, and our industrial partners that we are working for, that is multinationals mainly as Siemens, there's the car industry, um, very, very important for us, Daimler, BMW, um, Audi, Toyota, um, many of those, Hakuodo, not uh, to forget about Hakuodo, a Japanese advertising uh, company that we're working with in a three years uh, collaboration, as well as, of course, the cultural um, or artistic sector as the Los, Angel, Los Angeles Philharmonics or the Shanghai Department um, of City Development, etc. But in terms of education, we are running also laboratories in our center, in the Arts Electronica Center. Um, and this is a fab lab that we have there since 2009, um, where we, of course, um, try to give all these kind of first experience, first hands on uh, experiences to our visitors with 
um, production on 3D environments and 3D print or laser cutting and all those technologies as you are totally aware of. Um, with a very, very nice interface structure that we have here, these Wacom tablets, that enables the people, really the visitors, just like grab the pen and start drawing something that is really capable, the software that we have purposely created for it, is transforming this into the right data set so that can be easily printed or laser cut um, afterwards. And here we see uh, the group in the back. It's not that good to see. It's the 3D printer and the laser cutter here in the fab lab. But also what we are running is uh, a gene lab, a bio lab. And we're very proud of having a, a bio lab there, the S1 certified uh, gene technological bio lab that allows to decode human DNA. And it's publicly accessible. And we do workshops uh, with our visitors. And um, the concept of, those, of this bio lab and the concept of the workshops that we are running um, is really, I think, a perfectly genius uh, concept that Gerfried is really available for, uh, responsible for, um, that he came up with this idea of giving hands-on experience even with their outstanding uh, new technologies. That is, and there's one example that we are doing uh, as a workshop sequence uh, to explain a little bit this educational background that we have. That is, we invite people um, visitors from all ages to bring the most beloved plants to the bio lab. And we're telling them we're going to clone your plant. Actually, you are going to clone your plant. And then we do this workshop with them and it's quite easy. It's a piece of a, of a leaf that we take and we put it into a Petri dish. And in this Petri dish there's a glucose sugar liquid and this um, portion of the leaf starts growing wildly. And then in a second uh, uh, transformation, like a week or two later, a second workshop, the visitors take their wildly growing whatever it is out of the first beta. They should put it into a new one, that big box is here that you can see. And we have another liquid in these big boxes. This is also uh, Botenstoffe messengers in their proteins, not only the same um, glucose, of course, but also proteins that inform the cells for growing, that, you know, telling the cells you're becoming a trunk, you're becoming a root, you're becoming a leaf. And then again, after a week, out of that little um, cell ball, really a genetically identical plant is growing, if you make everything right, if you don't have dirty fingers and you know, this kind of thing. But um, that is the outcome. You have a copy of your plant. And in this last session, we're inviting the uh, visitors into a discussion, just like telling them or asking them what you have done. You know, it's like you've given a living being a second chance. It's not a big deal with a plant, maybe. But what if this goes to a pet? And what if this goes to a human being? And the visitors in this moment really do, because they have been going through this process, you know, they understood how easy it is, in terms of the plants at least, to clone a living being. They start, even the 10-year-old kids, start the most important, as we think, discussions on ethical criteria for gene technology, just because they have been going through this experience on recreating living creatures. And this is what we are standing for. It's actually that we want our visitors to understand that it's not the politicians, it's not the experts to make the decision on our future and how we integrate ourselves, our opinion into the future, how we create our future. It's us. And everybody has the possibility, but also the, the responsibility to get enough of information to build up your own opinion. And this is kind of framing, um, this scenario is kind of framing the idea of the Ars Electronica and the workshops that we do. We also do products 
as I said before. And this is the Switch product. You can buy it online, actually. Elekit is a Japanese company selling these uh, sets. And this set is it's an educational instrument, actually, really. Um, it's a very, very easy. Um, as you can see, that's the parts it exists of. It's a paper frame, and it has these uh, lines where you can draw on. And they can turn, just like flip over and sh uh, show the backside. So it's a zero one switch, really. Um, and underneath here, you can see there, oops, here, there is a sensor. And it could be a light sensor, it could be a microphone, it could be any kind of a distance uh, sensor. And all it does is just like flipping over. And what we do in the workshops is working with the kids to understand you know, the basic binary decision that is coming with a, with, a, with a digital system and make a creative use out of it. And just like putting these switches, they have been drawing and built together, assembled together, um, and come up with their own ideas. And that's um, one of the workshops that we did with the switch. And here's the proud innovators that we have with the switch. Um, and I think this is a very, very strong example also on how this educational principle of the Ars Electronica or the Ars Electronica Future Lab is getting along. Also, shortly want to mention the Ars Electronica Lab Academy. The Lab Academy is a format, a frame, where we're sending out members of the lab to different universities, uh, mentoring the students. It's a, a master degree or PhD degree um, um, course mentoring the students to come up with a um, installation with an interpretation of a different topic that we have selected with the professor together before. And then we invite the students, you know, they have to pitch their ideas to us. And then the best of those we invite to the Ars Electronica Future Lab, uh, to the festival uh, in, in summertime. So it's actually the course is not only producing some, conceptualizing something, producing something, but also showing something uh, and speaking about your own work in a public environment um, as well. And at the very, very end, I'd like to show one uh, example that leads from the art that we're doing, from the artwork that we're doing towards the industry um, later on. It is, there should be sound. To it. Oh, here it is. That is the Spexels. The Spexels is drones. Drones equipped with LEDs. And we're using the drones to form a display. That's the idea a three dimensional display up in the sky. That has been premiered in 2012 for a huge open door event at, in Linz, the Klangwolke. It's probably Europe's biggest outdoor event. And the Spexels, the three-dimensional display, um, has been premiered there. Meanwhile, we're doing the shows in uh, all around the world. We've been to Australia with it, we've been to... Um, thank you. Uh, we've been to around Europe, we've been opening the European cultural capital in Umeå with the Spexels and just like a few weeks later we've opened the Islamic cultural capital with the Spexels. But then all of a sudden it became interesting to us to bring them down into the inner space, really bring the Spexels down into the shared environment. And then you're interacting with the Spexels. You're just like, you know, on eye level with the Spexels. And this raised a very interesting, important question. That is how to communicate with these autonomous robots, with these autonomous vehicles. And how will we understand them? And not so much about how do they understand us. That's a technological, you know, challenge that is actually uh, mastered. The question is how can we read uh, robots and how can we read those autonomous beings? 
And this was not only interesting for us as a research topic, that was very much interesting also for the car industry, mainly uh, Mercedes-Benz Daimler. And we worked on this with them because they are um, creating an autonomous car that is you know, cruising around among us in our public spaces. And they had the same questions that we have addressed here. And it ended up in this car, the F015 by Mercedes. And in this year at the festival, this car has been premiered in Europe, in Linz, um, with the Ars Electronica Festival. And it's been cruising through the city of Linz. And this is how art can contribute to our future. And this is how um, art can be utilized on the one hand without exploiting the art itself, exploiting the power of the art. Thank you very much.